Well, gang, it's finally here. The ability to create consistent characters in Mid Journey. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into it. Plus, I've uncovered some tips and tricks that I think will really help you maximize your use of it for your creations. Plus, I've got a look at the latest update from Kyber. I think you're going to be really impressed with this. It is definitely very cool and doing something really unique. OK, let's dive in. Kicking off, Midjourney have finally released character references. So we no longer need like really bizarre prompt formulas or third party plugins or face swappers to achieve a consistent character across different scenes. To start off, we're obviously going to need a character. So uh, I figured we'll take our old pal, the man in the blue business suit and begin with him. So you can expect obviously a couple of re-rolls to find the character that you're looking for. I do have an additional trick on this coming up in a second. This guy is definitely, I don't know what business he's in, but that is not work appropriate, sir. I ended up running across this guy who I felt was, you know, appropriately man in a blue business suity. Uh, I did take him through a subtle upscale. I don't know if that matters or not, but I figured, you know, can't necessarily hurt. Uh, from here, we're going to take this over to first discord before I show you how to do this on the website. So very briefly, just to get the image off of the website, what we'll do is come over here and hit copy and then uh, come over and copy the image URL. On Discord, we issued the prompt photograph, a man in a blue business suit at a city cafe, drinking coffee in a window seat as the world rushes past him with an aspect ratio of 16.9. And then importantly, dash dash C ref character reference followed by a paste of the image URL. And from here, we have four images of our guy pondering out of a window, probably thinking, if that guy in the Parisian coffee shop in the Sora video isn't real, am I real? Now to note, these four images aren't exactly the character that we had initially generated, and that's okay. I kind of think of this phase as mid-journey getting to know the character. On the website side, what you're gonna wanna do is just you know, grab your image and drag him into the Imagine prompt bar. Now this is the important part. I'm actually zooming this in because it's a little bit on the finicky side. Uh, what you're going to want to do for character reference is actually you see a little person icon right there. So you're going to want to make sure that that is enabled. If you leave it on the default, then all that is is an image reference. You're not going to get the same character. You're just going to get the vibe of the overall image itself. So for this, I'm going to swap out the prompt for a man in a blue business suit walking through an office lobby and importantly going to change the aspect ratio to 916. That way we should get a full body shot out of him. So we ended up landing on this guy who looks pretty close. His pants do need to get ironed though. Uh, and now what we can do, because we have essentially our base image, we have our standing image now, and then we have one of our images from the cafe. Uh, we can actually use this and take all three of them in and drop them in as character references as well. I like this one because it was a pretty decent profile shot as well. So we're gonna drop this one in. And then finally our base image. Uh, one thing you can do by the way, is since it's actually sitting here, you can just take this and drag it right over. It's very nice quality of life uh, feature there mid journey. Taking all three of those reference images and then changing out the prompt to cinematic still, a man in a blue business suit, buying a burrito from a street vendor, uh, busy city street yields this as a result. Uh, yeah, that's our guy buying a burrito off of a street vendor. To note, he has had coffee and a street burrito at this point. He is in for a very long night. That said, on occasion, Mid Journey is just going to Mid Journey. For example, in our previous burrito example, where uh, it rolled up this young Chad, uh, kind of like, I guess, our man in a blue business suit's son taking a selfie at a taco stand. Uh, clearly, this is all wrong. However, you can actually in paint him out by just selecting the face of our young whippersnapper here, uh, we can then add in dash dash C ref followed by the URL of our original character. Running that yields us this, which is pretty decent. He is starting to drift a little bit away from the characteristics of our original character. There is a trick for that. We're gonna talk about that in just one second. But first, here's an interesting trick on generating a character without needing to generate multiple images of that character. And that's simply by creating a model turnaround sheet of that character. So the prompt here is character reference sheet, photographic, studio lighting, realistic, character reference sheet, sort of reinforcing that prompt, T-pose, 
uh, futuristic resistance fighter. Now to note, she is not in a T-pose, and additionally, she does not look photorealistic. She kind of looks a little bit more on the Unreal Engine side, but that's okay, this'll work. Midjourney themselves do state that this technique does work, because the way that character referencing works is that when it sees multiple characters, it's going to blend them together. So it stands to reason that if we have three separate images of the same character, that that would help reinforce the overall look of that character. What's really cool about C-Ref is the fact that you can change styles. For example, in that character reference sheet, she obviously had a very sort of gamish look to it, but running her through the prompt, cinematic still, female resistance fighter, battling robots in a James Cameron action film, style by Terminator, yields us this, where, you know, she now has the characteristics of a real person. And as you continue to generate up more images, you do build up a library of that character in various poses that you can use for further character reference. References. Now, as always, I encourage you to continuously re-roll, explore, swap out your prompts, and don't necessarily expect a home run every single time. Um, I don't want to cherry pick here, but, you know, so this was a, you know, a four up of one of the uh, character reference prompts. Uh, you can see here we sort of ended up with a concept art style, uh, another sort of concept art style. This one was, it was okay. Uh, and then this one was okay as well. Um, so if I wanted to continue along with a cinematic look, uh, I could grab both of these two and add them to my character library. You know, it just kind of occurred to me that she kind of looks like Jenna Ortega. And now I really want to see like Wednesday Adams versus the Terminator. One command that you will definitely want to be aware of and use is character weight or dash dash CW. This has a scale of one to 100, 100 being essentially the exact same character as appears in your original reference image, and then you can scale that down. Now, why would you want to scale that down? Well, for example, if we wanted to take this image of our cyberpunk woman with long white hair standing in a snowy alley and change her over to a photographic look, but then also set the scene in summer, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want her to be in that level of, you know, heavy armor. So by taking that image as a character reference, once again, we swap over to the character reference button uh, and then changing the prompt out to photographic still, woman with long white hair and a black t-shirt, intense gaze, city, hot summer day, and then dash dash CW of 50. So half the amount of the character weight and run that. We end up with the same character, our cyberpunk woman with long white hair, albeit now rendered in a photographic style, standing on some you know small town street somewhere, definitely heavy summer vibes. But the bigger note is by taking the character weight down to 50, she's no longer wearing, you know, heavy cyberpunk armor, which would look a little bit on the out of place side and instead is simply wearing a black t-shirt. Still has the intense gaze of a warrior that pretty much says that you've already lost the battle, suggesting that, you know, she pay for her half of the meal. So returning back to our Jenna Ortega sci-fi dystopian epic, you can also use style references in conjunction with character reference as well. For example, taking the overused sci-fi trope of the mission briefing, uh, this is a shot from Prometheus, and using that as a style reference, we end up with this, where it definitely has picked up on all of the background style details, uh, you know, those sort of blue-hued computer monitors. Now, I will say that you do run into some problems with this technique, especially if you start calling out for background characters, uh, namely because all of the background characters then become your main character. I mean, granted, you could very easily go through and in-paint these characters out, but hey, maybe it works to your advantage, like if you're doing a sequel to uh, Multiplicity. So to use style references, you'll want to end up hitting this middle button here. Uh, that then turns it into a style reference. Once again, character reference, style reference, and image reference. I always feel that style references never really took off. I took a whole deep dive look at it in a previous video that's linked down below, but now in conjunction with character references, I think that it becomes a really powerful combination. Uh, for example, taking just like this still image of uh, a shot from Mad Max Fury Road and utilizing that with our character reference, we end up with images like this, which definitely have that sort of aesthetic and color grade look 
of that Mad Max shot. Whereas utilizing this shot from Tenant ends up giving us this. So yeah, there's definitely a lot to explore in here. If you were sleeping on style references, again, you could check out that previous video. It is linked down below. Just as a note, you still can't run photographs of actual people as character references. So this does not work as like a face swapper. Uh, for example, taking you know this image of me, running it as a character reference in Mid Journey uh, with the prompt man in a blue business suit, uh, we ended up with this guy who I, I guess you know, he kind of looks like, he kind of looks like uh, my older brother who doesn't exist, uh, who I probably owe money to and who is still disappointed with my career choices. All I can say to him is who bailed who out of jail in our 20s. As an additional note, Midjourney states that C-Ref can only be used for characters, uh, namely humanoid characters. That said, Umesh actually discovered that you can actually use it uh, for different applications as well. Uh, here, taking a C-Ref of kind of this sprocket uh, and running it through a number of different iterations. So this might be an interesting backdoor into generating up things like logos or icons or maybe even props. Character consistency in Mid Journey has long been a hurdle to overcome. And now that it's here, along with the bevy of other features available to us, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what you guys end up creating. Moving on, Kyber have recently updated to a 3.0 model, and it's pretty impressive. If you haven't checked in with Kyber in a while, I do recommend swinging by. Uh, the video transform feature is gotten really good, and 3.0 motion, well, as we'll see in just a second, is very impressive. So kicking off with this mid-journey image of a kind of robot girl uh, and bringing that in, issuing the prompt of robot girl blinking smiles, uh, and then using the cinematic preset, uh, we can hit video settings. Uh, from here, we can select a video duration up to 16 seconds, which is pretty impressive. It's like four times longer than most of the other standard video generators. Uh, Evolve, which is the slider that I think that Kyber is most associated with. It's the thing that kind of gives everything a weird sort of warpy hallucinogenic look. Well, what's interesting is that you can actually take this down now to zero. And then finally, we have a motion slider, which we can take up to 10 for a considerable amount of motion or you know, down to obviously zero for no motion. Uh, just make sure the version three model is selected down here. And when we run it, we end up with this, which is pretty impressive. The facial coherency stays pretty solid. Um, it starts to lose it a little bit around this seven to eight second mark, but I mean, you get a pretty good amount of space before that ends up happening. Yeah, there is a lot of crazy movement happening in the background, which you could probably tone down via the motion slider. But I mean, for the most part, I think this is probably one of the longest video generations that's managed to stay this coherent. Yes, yes, outside of Sora. But again, we do not have Sora, and I'm pretty sure you all caught the news that we are not getting Sora anytime soon. Once again, one of our famous recurring characters, Dutch football player Daniela van den Ock, dressed as a pirate. Uh, yeah, overall, I think it looks pretty solid. She's maintaining consistency. She's not like morphing out a beard and turning into Jack Sparrow. There is one issue kind of happening with her hand there. There's also no camera movement controls, which is actually probably helpful in this case as it helps maintain the overall permanence and consistency of these characters. Taking our man in the blue business suit and issuing the prompt smiles, uh, we ended up with this, which I mean, that's it's really pretty good. There are some issues obviously with the flickering, but I mean, I think that if you were to take this through a de-flicker and sharpen it up a bit, this would look really, really, really solid. But I'll always say when it comes to surreal and weird, like Kyber just can't be beat. I mean, this is pretty awesome. Does it feel a bit like a fever dream? Yes, it does. And that is what makes it unique in my opinion. The last thing that I want is all of these video generators to end up having an overall homogenized look. So if you ask me, keep it weird, Kyber. We'll take a bit of a deeper dive into Kyber 3.0 later because there are a lot of other really interesting aspects to it, including beat matching for music. And uh, we didn't even go over the text to video options here. So keep a lookout for that one. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.